What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to use state trees to build your AIs. It's going to be a very easy build to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so first of all, what are state trees? Well, a state tree is a tool that controls the behavior of actors, pawns, or just AI in general by organizing different actions, which are called states, and the rules for switching between them, which are called transitions. So with that said, let's go ahead and enable the state trees plugin. Let's go up into edit, plugins, and search for state tree. As you can see, we already have state tree enabled, but we do also need to enable gameplay state tree. So let's go ahead and tick this and then click on restart now. Okay, so the project restarted and now we have the state trees plugins that we need enabled. So in the content browser, let's right click and go inside of the artificial intelligence section and select state tree. On here, as you can see, we have different options for different classes. In this case, let's select the state tree component, which is simply the default one. Let's call this st underscore enemy AI and open this up. So as you can see, we have different windows over here to build our state tree. Let's go ahead and go from left to right. So first of all, we have the asset details and here is where we customize all the properties about our state tree. So for example, the parameters, evaluators, global tasks, and so on. In this video, we will not deep dive into evaluators or global tasks. We will simply cover parameters and the schema, but overall, this section allows you to define some properties that you need for the state tree. Next, we have the states window itself, and this is where we, you know, create the actual logic blocks for all of our states and all that stuff. And lastly, we have the details panel, which essentially displays all of the properties about that specific state that we have selected. So with that covered, let's go ahead and begin creating our first states. So for this AI video, it's gonna be very, very simple. We are simply gonna go ahead and make sure that an AI can chase us and then simply play an attack animation. So let's go ahead and add a new state. And as you can see, it added a new block right below the other block which we had, which was root. As you can see, it also added some indentation because this root block over here is the parent of this others. We'll get a bit more into detail about the difference between just having parents and use, you know, normal types of, um, you know, tasks and states and all that stuff. But for now, let's simply name this to chase player because this will be the state for chasing the player. So as soon as our AI enters in this state, it will simply go ahead and follow the player in the world as simple as that. Let's go ahead and compile and save. Now, when we select this state over here, as you can see in the details panel, we have all of these parameters that we can configure. For example, the name, the tag, the color, the type, and all this stuff. Now, in this case, once again, it's a simple overview of state trees. So I'm not gonna go ahead and go too much into detail about all of this stuff, but only so that you know, the type will always be state for 99.9% .9 of the cases. This is the default type of logic that we would use for AIs and many other stuff. So pretty much you will never need to touch this parameter in your life. And then the same with selection behavior, we can leave this by default on what it is. Don't worry about that. So the most important points about the individual states are the enter conditions, the tasks, and the transitions. The enter conditions are essentially the rules for you know the logic to enter into this state and of course execute whatever it is inside of this state. The tasks is the actual logic that executes. So it will be linked to a blueprint graph where we actually put in you know, the blueprint for chasing the player, play the attack montage and all this stuff. And lastly, transitions is what allows, you know, once this task completes, for example, go into the next one or whatever and all that stuff. Okay, so let's begin by creating the actual logic for this state over here. So we go to tasks, we can add a new task, but of course we only have a couple default ones. So we need to create our own custom one to add the logic that we want, which in this case to chase the player. So if we go up into new task over here, we can select the default class. And now let's go ahead and name this task underscore chase player. As simple as that. Let's go ahead and open this up. And as you can see, it's simply a blueprint graph. Now, this will be very similar to our tasks in behavior trees. It's essentially the same thing. 
So we need to go into the function section over here, click on override, and now we can override a function. In this case, we want to override the enter state. So as soon as in the AI, we enter into this state, we execute the following code. So I can make it very simple where I simply type print stream and we print hello. But let's go ahead and just fully make the code, which is going to be very simple. We're literally going to use the AI move to node from Ryu engine and we just need to put in a pawn. This pawn is the one that has to move. So we need a reference to our enemy AI blueprint. We can do this by just creating a variable, call this AI pawn. And on the type, simply set this to be pawn. It's going to be an object reference. Now, very important, let's click this I icon over here. So it is instance editable, and that means that we can access it from outside in our state tree. With that said, let's drag this, get plug it in. And of course, the tie actor will be, well, the get player character in our world. Let's put the acceptance radius to 120, so he doesn't get so cl cl close to me. And then on success, we can add this finish task node over here, copy and paste this, put this in the other pin, disable this, and boom, there we go. So as simple as that, once the AI reaches the destination, we will finish the task. So then the state tree can consider all the transitions, conditions, and all that stuff to go into the next tasks that we need. So with that done, we can close this, go to the chase player task over here, and add a new task. As you can see now, it shows up. We can select this task, and as you can see, we have the variable exposed. This is the AI upon variable that I created. So it is as simple as going into this bind property over here, and we can promote this to a variable, but we don't want that. We want to actually bind it with a default feature of state trees, which is really cool. As you can see, we have a default variable, which is actor. This is essentially the, you know, actor of our enemy AI. This is the actor who has the state tree. So we drag the and open the schema. We can select the class of our enemy AI. This is really, really cool. It, we only have this in state trees. We don't have this in behavior trees or other stuff. So first of all, of course, I need to create a, a blueprint class for my enemy AI. We don't have this. So let's right click, go to blueprint class, select character and name this BP underscore enemy AI. Open this up. I'm going to make it very simple. Just add a mesh, which is going to be, for example, man is simple. This is going to be minus 89, minus 90. So it's on position. And then the class is going to be a many compile and save. And now we also need to do one thing in our enemy AI to execute the state tree, which is to add a component. And of course, we just need to search for state tree and add state tree, not AI, because in this case, we use the default class. Okay, so state tree, enter, and then on the parameters, we select the one that we created. Okay, so this is how we add the state tree into our enemy AI to be able to be executed and of this stuff. Close this. So now in here, we can search for enemy AI. And boom, as you can see, this actor variable updated which means that now we have direct reference to the enemy class, which allows us to go back into the task, into the test panel, and bind this to the actor. And that's it. Now, let's drag this enemy AI into the world, and if we press play, nothing happens. This is because we need one important thing to make AIs work in Unreal Engine, which is a nav mesh. So we go to the quickly add to the press section, volumes, and drag a nav mesh bounce volume to our level, we can lock the scale and put this to 20. Now if we press P on our viewport, you can see this green area is highlighted. This is where the AI can go. And this is how Unreal Engine calculates of the possible paths that our AI can navigate through. We press play. As you can see, the AI is chasing me because, as you can see, we only have one state. As soon as the root enters into the state, which is automatic, we execute this logic and you can see it is working just fine we are executing our task which is to chase the player and everything like that as you can see it's very very simple but it is working correctly which is really really cool now first of all i might need to do some modifications to the enemy ai he is a bit too fast let's go to the character movement scroll down and enable orient rotation to movement so his rotation is a bit smoother let's also go back up and set the max walk speed to around 500 and then last but not least let's go to class defaults 
search for yaw, disable this orient uh, rotation to yaw, compound save, and now he will go a bit smoother as you can see when he's walking. We still don't have the animation set up, we'll do that a bit later, that's like extra stuff. The main focus of the video is the state tree, but you get the idea, everything is working fine. Okay, so back in our state tree, let's go ahead and add another state to attack our player. Okay, so once we have completed this chase player state and he, you know, reached our destination, we need to play, of course, an attack animation, and we can do this through another state. So let's add a new state and let's call this attack player. Let's compound, save. And as you can see, we are adding this attack player also as a child of root. So root is the parent of this too. But if we want to have things a bit more organized, we can even create categories. So if I add another state, I can call this, for example, on scene player. Okay, so imagine that when we are seeing the player, we enter into this aggressive kind of states and we want to do this. So we can simply put this state um, up over here and then make this to a child by just dragging it. Now remember to drag attack here. But as you can see now, we have a category of unseen player and inside of this category, we are chasing the player and then attacking the player. And this just makes sure that everything is way more organized and have also, let's say, parent conditions and parent states, which is gonna be very important in a second when we do the different kind of states in terms of idling or patrolling or whatever. So with that said, let's go into the attack player and we need to create a new task. So new task, blueprint base, let's call this task underscore attack player. Open this up. As you might remember, we need to go to functions, enter state, and then over here, we need to go ahead and play the animation or whatever we want. In this case, I need to go ahead and create a new variable and have the player reference. Well, not the player reference, sorry, the enemy reference so we can play the montage. So this will be like enemy AI. This will be, of course, the enemy AI blueprint. Watch your reference. Make sure this I is enabled. Drag this and then we can say play montage. And there we go. Now I need to import some attack animations. I'm going to be using this free animation pack. So I just imported it. And now with this animation, I can right click and create a montage. Go back to the task. Go ahead and add this montage. And then I can simply add a bit of delay. So let's do like, you know, 0.5 or 0.8, something like that. Then I can say finish task. Remember to always, always, always add this node so that our state tree knows when this task has, you know, been completed so we can continue on with our flow of code, if that makes sense. We can close this, go back to the state tree, and on this tag player, we can add the task. And of course, we need to bind the actor for our variable. And that's it. Now, as you can see, when we press play, nothing happens. Why is this happening? Well, as you can see, the chase player is going back to the root. Once this is completed, we are, you know, knowing this because of this icon, right? The transition to root state. We want to change this. So we can simply select the chase player uh, state, add any transition. And when the state has succeeded and we have reached our destination, we can transition to, well, the attack player. And now when we press play, he goes and attacks. As you can see, everything is working fine and he continues to chase me and everything like that. So everything is gonna hit on working. And then of course, when he attacks, we want to go back to root to know and repeat the whole process. Now on top of this, let's add one final thing, which is gonna be the idle state. So add a new state, call this idle, and this will be on top of everything. Okay, this will be like the you know default state in this case, okay? So of course the idle state will not play anything, if we press play, it will be just on idle, right? But what we can do is add a enter condition, okay, which we haven't done yet. So the enter conditions are essentially just uh, kind of rules that define when we can enter a state or not. It's not always gonna be, you know, from state to state like automatic, it can be with conditions. So what we can do is add a simple parameter over here, which, you know, just think of parameters as variables. 
let's select a boolean and rename this to is seen player question mark so this is a simple boolean variable which is called parameters in state trees and imagine that we want to play the idle state when we are not seeing the player but when we are seeing the player we want to go back to the unseen player which is the chase and everything like that so in idle we can add in condition and it's going to be a boolean compare because we want to you know compare a boolean as you can see we have invert left and right so for the left we can plug in a variable in this case we want to plug in one of our parameters which is a same player and on the right we can simply say okay is this true or false in this case if we are on idle we want a same player to be false so we can leave this and uh, disabled and that's it but then for on scene player we can add a new answer condition it's going to be a boolean again it's going to be a reference to a scene player but of course this has to be true on the right because we want to enter if we are seeing the player so right now by default as you can see a scene player is disabled okay so if i press play nothing happens but if i enable this variable and press play he comes to me because the condition rules are working so we can use conditions for this kind of things for example are we seeing the player are we not seeing the player and all of this stuff last but not least i'm gonna simply add a little animation blueprint for the enemy ai and boom now he has some cool animations as you can see everything is working just fine so that's it guys if you found this video helpful i would really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to my channel make sure to go ahead and join my discord server with over 10,000 members and game developers to be in, in the best conversations now yes with all i said bye bye